the Ecumenical Leadership Council of South Africa, uh, Dr. Sipo Matlangu. I think he's been on the platform with us from the beginning. Uh, Dr. Matlangu, uh, welcome. Um, and I think you know the drill by now, so I'm not going to repeat it, <laughs> but essentially you have uh, 15 minutes to, to speak to your written submission. Uh, over to you. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much and good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson, and to all the Honorable Members and to my colleagues. I hope I'm audible enough. You can hear me well. Uh, I represent an organization called the Ecumenical Leadership Council of South Africa. It's a nonprofit organization founded uh, as an association of ecumenical church organizations representing more than 20,000 members. But without saying much about our organization, I just want to talk on our submission that we did. But maybe before I, I speak much on what uh, we've submitted, when I listen to the second speaker, I think uh, his name was Mr. Ashraf Paka from the Association of Muslim uh, accountants and lawyers. I think my presentation is parallel with what uh, he was saying. And our written submission sought to establish that the legislation has failed to define the offense of hate speech with sufficient clarity through this proposed bill. We also want to show how the hate speech offenses provided in the bill overshoots the mark and falls outside the specific exclusion of hate speech provided for in the section 16.2 uh, of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, thereby violating the right of freedom of expression. Section 16 of the Constitution, as we may know, guarantees the freedom of expression. However, Section 16.2 lists a number of instances where this right can be limited. In other words, it lists a group of instances that are not protected by the freedom of expression and reads thus. Number one, uh, subsection one does not extend to the following, which is the propaganda for war, incitement of imminent violence, or advocacy of hatred that is based on race, ethnicity, gender, or religion, and that constitute incitement to cause harm. We cannot, however, uh, have a discussion about section 16 without mentioning section 15, which ensures religious freedom. This is because religious freedom involves both the right to believe and the right to practice that belief. Our difficult past in South Africa demonstrates that truly democratic government cannot exist without an effective freedom of expression clause. It is our opinion and submission that section 16 goes along or a long way and is sufficient to ensure that this freedom is well maintained. While we agree that there is a need to take firm action against hate crimes, the issue of extending hate speech is significantly more complicated due to the impact that the proposed bill might have on the core right to the freedom of expression. Our painful history uh, of hatred, bigotry, and prejudice nearly brought the country to the brink of destruction and total anarchy. Recent events in the country, for example, where individuals were killed because they, of their sexual orientation have also shook the country to its core. As the council representing ecumenical church, we condemn hate wherever it appears and support all actions that seek to significantly reduce or eliminate the promotion of any hateful practices. This notwithstanding, our submission re revolves around the fact that the proposed legislation or any legislation for that matter should not limit the right to freedom of expression that is carefully defined and protected under section 16 of our constitution. 
the Ecumenical Leadership Council of South Africa submits that through increasing the number of protected categories uh, from four, which are the race, ethnicity, gender, and religion, this bill went far beyond Section 16 clear intention. The bill increases the number of protected categories to now include a new definition of harm that includes emotional, psychological, phys physical, social, cultural, and or economic harm. A definition that we submit is so broad and open to subjective interpretation. Meaning that if one of our affiliates delivers a sermon that offends someone's feelings and emotion, then that can be construed as harmful and therefore declared as hate speech. This threat uh, to freedom of expression is further compounded by the possibility that any person who is convicted of an offense of hate speech is liable to a fine or to imprisonment for a period not exceeding eight years or to both fine and such imprisonment in some instances. The legislation establishes the offenses of hate speech and hate crimes by requiring that hatred of people due to shared characteristics be regarded as an aggravating factor in sentencing and by prescribing minimum sentences for such crimes. This is despite the fact that hatred is already being considered an aggravating factor for statutory offenses under existing common laws, such as the Righteous Assembly Act and the Criminal Injuria Law. And we've seen that happening uh, in the past, in the case of uh, Miss Vicky Mombeck from KZN. Uh, maybe some of us know about that case. We've seen these laws and acts being uh, used. What baffles our mind is that the bill seeks to criminalize hate speech without properly defining what hate is. Our esteemed colleague, Daniela Ellenbeck, put it eloquently when she said, are we criminalizing hate speech or criminalizing the speech that people hate? While the necessity to firmly combat hate crimes is widely agreed upon, the issue of creating a hate speech crime in general is significantly more contentious due to the potential effects that the proposed legislation may have on the fundamental right to freedom of expression. We readily concede that the bill extends a broad exemption from its provisions for any bona fide uh, artistic, creative performance or other form of expression, any academic or scientific inquiry, fair and accurate reporting or commentary in the public interest, the bona fide interpretation of proselytizing or preaching and espousing of any religious tenant, belief, preaching, doctrine, or writing. There is a prima facie impression to the effect that religious communication is protected by the aforesaid exemptions through the clause that provides the bona fide interpretation of proselytizing or espousing of any religious tenant, belief, teaching, doctrine, or writing. However, for us, the contentious provisio accompanying this is that the expression of these religious communications, the proselytizing and interpretation would have to take place in a religious place of worship or constitute some form of formal proselytizing in public. The issue for us here is what constitute formal proselytizing. Does a formal proselytizing exclude a pastor or a priest who preaches the word of God in the street corner? Does it exclude a pastor who ministers in the trains, in the buses, or any form of public transform, transportation as we see in many of our communities? Does it exclude a pastor who pitches a tent for soul winning purpose? The truth is that if the bill passes and becomes law, a lot of religious leaders who make up the majority of our affiliates 
will have to cross a potentially combustible minefield in order to preach the gospel? How do religious leaders preach a biblical scripture that says, for example, homosexuality is an abomination without being labeled as hate speech or maybe facing criminal charges if the bill is passed? Section 15 reads in conjunction with section 16, establishes the right of individuals and communities to free exercise of religion. Thus in South Africa, there is a free exercise component as well as a free expression component. Freedom of religion and freedom of expression imply a lack of compulsion or constraint. Therefore, this right may be harmed by policies that force persons to act or refrain from acting in ways that are contradictory to their religion. The provisions of the proposed bill are superfluous because courts already have the ability to consider racial motivation into account as an aggravating factor in deciding sentence. They also superfluous because section 16.2 of the constitution is enough to provide remedies in cases where any person goes beyond the scope of six, section 16.1. In conclusion, the very possibility of draconian sentences associated with the bill have the potential of forcing our affiliates who are mostly religious leaders to self-censor the expression of any view that might upset anyone from the 15 categories of the potential victims. This would seriously stifle the free exercise of our Christian religious beliefs and adhering to the Great Commission. The bill makes it far easier for a person to be found guilty of the crime of hate speech and sent to jail and could be used to silence critics of either political figures, especially if the powers that may be feel threatened as evidenced in countries like Venezuela, where leadership uh, of President Chavez and now uh, Mr. Maduro orchestrated uh, the accumulation of power in the execution or executive branch. As a result, there was a widespread erosion of human rights guarantees and the government was enabled to intimidate, censor and prosecute its critics and reported that broadcasters may be censored if they criticize the government. The censorship of free uh, freedom of expression or free expression will do nothing to eliminate hate, but will rather drive it further underground and make it harder uh, to identify, to report it, or to act against it. The crux of our argument here, what we would require assistance from this committee are the following. The definition of hate for the practical purpose of this bill, the definition of formal proselytizing, the empirical evidence to the effect that section 16.2 is not enough to cover any eventualities relating to the hate speech. And if those can be clearer to us, uh, maybe we would consider. But for now, uh, we, we do support the spirit of the bill, but not the letter of the proposed bill. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mathangu, uh, for your for your presentation. Um, honourable members, do you have any questions for clarity? You can hear me, now, uh, Dr. Mathangu. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I can. Oh, you hear can. You. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I see Honourable Dodo. Uh, you on the platform? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair. I, I I I like the spirit of Dr. Masangu, even how he articulates issues. He's, yes, is 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 quite inspiring on a on a Tuesday afternoon. Now 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 now, Honorable Masangu, you as you say, you support the the spirit of this bill to deal with hate crime, hate speech, and all of that. 
but the latter is the one that is problematic. Uh, for me, what is concerning about what you say in general is that if you say you are not happy about this definition, or you, you are not saying, I think the better definition is this one. If you say hate or hate crime, this is what I think is, is a proper definition. Is, is the point that I'm raising is the same point that concerns me with regard to the presenters before you. They don't say to us, look at that, look at that. We think that with this definition in a broader context, it is. It, it covers us to a larger extent. And if you just say you don't support it, but you don't tell us in precision what are your views, it inhibits us from really understanding and really consider what is on the table on the table for us. And I would, I would propose the same thing, that uh, please, uh, maybe after this meeting, just send, write your own proposals about what you think is a proper definition so that parliament must consider it. That is one point. Proselytizing is not a, it's not a crime. That's my knowledge. It, it also applies in, in that sense. People uh, have got the right to lobby, to converse and to campaign and to encourage people to join their own religion. This is something that we must do it, uh, especially when we do it uh, respecting the human rights, the preferences, the beliefs of other people. And in that context, uh, 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 propagate what you think it is your own religious philosophy and take it forward uh, in that sense. Uh, and, 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 and for me, I want you to understand, I want, I want to understand from you what will constitute politizing religion as a, as, a, as a problem, as a criminal, as a criminal offense. If you can just talk to that, uh, it could be, could be very, very much helpful. Other than that, I'm happy with the, the, the submission that you, you put on, on the table. It's just food for thought. It, it makes us to, to think deep as we continue with this process of, uh, of, of public hearings. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Dodogo, for the question. Um, uh, Honorable Mikulakis. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, Honorable Mikulakis. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to support the the request of uh, Honorable Dodogo that uh, some of the amendments um, that are, or not some of the amendments that are proposed, but some of the proposals that are being made um uh, for it to if possible um come in the form of 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 uh, concrete proposals on on possible amendments um to the draft bill that i think would help us to at least give us a, a an idea um of of how to move forward at least something to consider um in in that sense as well so i would very much welcome that request if um uh, Dr. Mahlangu is open to to that request. Thank you. Uh, to, just to be clear, uh, on members, it would be the definition of hate uh, and the definition of formal proselytizing. Oops. Yes. Chip, Chip, any yes. such proposals, I think, should be yes. welcomed. Okay. No, no, no problem. I just wanted to, it to be clear because he raised the, those three three issues at the end. Okay, uh, Dr. Matlango, over to yourself. Uh, if you you wish to respond and or provide a, a supplementary uh, response. Thank, thank you, Chair. I think, firstly, um, our initial view is this bill is superfluous, meaning that probably we don't even need this bill. It's not only a matter of uh, defining things because we feel within our constitution, and other laws that we have in the country, the issue of somebody who creates hate crime is well covered. But in the alternative, we, we are more than happy to apply our minds and send our amendments in writing 
uh, as as the things that we are proposing as requested by other honorable members. I, I hope I'm clear there. Okay. Uh, are you? Okay. No, that, that's very, very fine. No, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maslangu, for your presentation and for taking this time to respond uh, to questions from honourable members. Uh, you are, I think, the last presenter. Um, thank you. Uh, Gershon, do we have Lita Labantu? No, they're not on the platform. Okay. Okay, I members, I think it's uh, it's been a, a pretty uh, long uh, engagement uh, and I think rather fruitful one uh, with uh, stakeholders that made uh, inputs into into the into the, the hate crime safe speech bill. Um, let me then I'll take this opportunity to thank uh, each and every organization once again and or individual who made a presentation to the committee. And let me also thank committee members uh, for their engagement on the submissions that were made. Um, our members, we schedule them tomorrow uh, to meet at, uh, is it nine o'clock, Gershwin? Uh, just to confirm the time. And that's correct, Chair, because I'll be sending the link out immediately after okay. this meeting. All right, no problem. Uh, our members, so we'll meet tomorrow uh, at nine o'clock to, to continue. Uh, with engagements of other presenters in terms of submissions to this board. Thank you very much, our members, and thank you very much to all organizations and stakeholders. The, the session is uh, adjourned. Thank you, Chair.